stick with me in this video. It's going to be interesting. I'm not just talking about the Russian economy. I'm going to be talking about elves, chickpeas, Russian discos, and how this relates to the Russian economy. I know you guys are going to serious gyrations with geopolitical wiling about Washington and Moscow partitioning. Even I've heard of secret agreements over mineral rights and lands over Ukraine. So I want to get the dopamine levels down a little bit and tell you something interesting, as I always try to do something a little bit out of the box. This time, we're going to equate BMI with Russian, the Russian economy. So as you know, I'm not a big believer in macroeconomic data when it's coming from non-transparent democracies like Russia. Not a lot of trust in that. In the academic world, I may be more serious. I had, actually, I am. And it may take months, if not years, to create an academic paper in which the data must be looked over with a fine-tooth comb, tested, kicked. Because in science, you just don't want to prove something for it to be science, you also want to prove it wrong. You want the ability for people to replicate and prove your theory and claim. So when we're dealing with the economy of Russia to make just general sweeping statements with a lot of superlatives to get people's adrenaline going, it's not good enough. What you have to do is you have to look at data. And as somebody who's looking at data, I always look at microeconomic data like Numbrio. In this case, we're going to look at BMI. What is BMI in Russia and the alarming, here's the superlative, increase in BMI have to do with the Russian economy? So my first idea was I was looking at height and weight of humans in early Neolithic farmers. You know, the ones that came from Mesopotamia, populated a lot of Europe, and then subsequently Indo-European waves uh, overwrote that. During the Roman times, I was looking at height, and I thought the height would be a male height, which is a good indicator. But that's an imprecise indicator because it lags tremendously. Usually, height is determined during prenatal, childhood, adolescence, really. So then I said, well, what about weight? Weight in itself, as you know, doesn't tell a good story. What tells a good story is BMI, and specifically female BMI, because men have muscle mass. You know, okay. And females tend to have a more general average BMI as an indicator because they're obviously the carriers of the next generation. They have to make nests. I know it's a generalization. Please forgive me. I don't mean to offend. Peace and love to all. But generally, they're the caretakers of the next generation. And so their BMIs are a lot more stable. What we see is as an economy prospers and grow rich, the BMI increases. That's what you'd expect, right? The, hip, the, the, the weight and you know, the amount of muscle and fat and tissue heights increase. That's expected. But what we have seen is in the Roman times, the BMI was like optimal. It was like for females, it was like, I don't know, 18 to 21. And that's a pretty good BMI. They were just beautiful, probably optimal. Uh, weight, height, everything. During the Dark Ages, it fell, the BMI, because of starvation. Then during the medieval Rome, uh, warming times, it also increased to this optimal 18 to 21%. You know, I'm sure Instagrammers would love to go back there. But then, <laughs> during the 13 and 1400s, BMI went down significantly, below 18%. That was because of food shortages, starvation. So, and then industrialization occurred and everything like that. And it got better. And let's go to the modern world and let's talk about Russia and the Russian BMI and what's happening. It's very curious. We're going to talk about something called the substitution effect. But early, let's say Neolithic farmers and everything, they grew things like chickpeas. They grew flax. They had these ancient grains, you know, something that looked like something like this, unrefined grasses high fiber, 2000, if you know it and you're living in Europe, that's whole grain, ancient grains. You're not, you're not going to, you're not going to put on weight eating ancient grains. Some people eat like, you know, biblical diet or something like that, or ancient Roman diet, Mediterranean modified diet, and you don't put on weight. But as we go to the modern times, 
refined foods and carbohydrates obviously are probably, in my opinion, the biggest indicator for the expansion of the hip to waist ratio. And like I said, I was going to talk about L's. I used to be kind of a hobbit. Okay. So I'm not throwing stones. And now I'm an elf, I guess. I'm pretty thin. And because I switched from refined carbohydrates to whole grains, but another story. In Russia, we see in a dramatic, they have the highest BMI in the whole of Europe. And since 2022, BMI has shot through the roof. So what's going on there? And what is that indicating from economics? In a country like France with rising prosperity, BMI is fairly stable. But in Hungary, Slovakia, and Russia, BMI is shooting through the roof. They're over 30. It's because it's the substitution effect. Something has happened. The Russian economy, as it collapses, people buy more cookies, cakes, pies, white grain, white flour, refined products, sweets, just to beef up, almost like sumo wrestlers. You know, when I was going to Russian discos in the 90s, you know, guys, I shouldn't say this, but just, you know, your neck would get stiff, okay? <laughs> now it's the opposite. That doesn't exist except on Instagram. It's these Russian women have the highest BMIs. I think they're exceeding the U.S., okay? No, I'm not throwing stones at the U.S. I know, you know, the president of the U.S. has said something about, you know, Europe being so lame, but, you know, whatever. It happens because people substitute food, high-quality food. They should be eating whole grains. You know how expensive, like, Organic kale and whole grain orc, uh, what is that? I don't even know the translation. It's orc, orc, orcashova bread or rye bread, ancient grain bread. You know how expensive that is? It's much easier to get a, a loaf of white bread, wonder bread. And that's what the Russians are doing. They're substituting in the last four years, high quality food for low quality food. And statistically, their BMIs, not something that the Russian government thinks about hiding, is shooting through the roof, okay? I mean, it's crazy that it's Hungary and Slovakia has that also. I, I don't know why. I, I think Malta is an exception also that maybe it's just a nice lifestyle in Malta. But if people are using the substitution effect in Russia to support their lifestyle as drug use alcoholism goes up, as life expectancy goes down, and adolescent height is going down in Russia and BMI is going up, that's not telling you bread and circus is all as well in, in Moscow. It's like basically Rome's burning and somebody's fiddling. Think about it. It's such a minor little detail, but the devil is in the details. It comes out. This, this evidence, the cracks in the economy, they can make a claim, you know, or the IMF or the World Bank or, you know, whoever's feeding the Russian propaganda machine today that all is well, the economy is growing, Russia big, Russia is strong. But then how would you explain the rapidly expanding BMI of the females in Russia? That is something you can't hide. It's almost like, you know, females have a six cent. They know if you ever heard of the hemline index, the hemline index is when times are bad women dress more conservatively. Well, when times are bad, their BMIs go up. You can fact check me. I wanted to put the charts on here, but I've got so many responsibility. I wanted to put the data, the quotes, where I got the data. Maybe I will, I'll see, but I'm just trying to crank a video out because, uh, you know, I have so many, uh, honestly, so many responsibilities with work and my economics, etc. So you let me know what you think. It's an interesting study to transverse humanity and archaeology. They use archaeological remains, obviously, to determine and estimate BMI. But today we have World Health Organization and we have, you know, data actually from Russia coming out on health organization and other people extrapolating the general health of a population. And Ukraine's more like France. It has more of a stable BMI. So is Poland. Poland's edging up and Ukraine's edging up a little because of this amazing wealth effect that we experience in Poland. But Russia, how would you explain the inverse relationship? 
it's it's the opposite the ancients had. The ancients had no food, but you know, it was a matter of everything was like non-processed. There, it's just lunch meats, uh, smallets, if you know what that is, and white bread. And that's what they're living on. Maybe, you know, sodas and pastries. You could also say it's a lack of aesthetic practices, lack of spirituality. You know, whatever happened to fasting? You fast, the money you save on food, you give to the poor. Almsgiving, right? I don't see that happening in Russia. Or even if you're an uh, uh, Epicurean, I don't see it happening. But I like the uh, earlier, my former mention about fasting and almsgiving. So it's the lack of aesthetic practices or the substitution effect. Russia's going down. Ukraine's going to win. You just have to be patient. My name is Mark Birnott. I'm a monetary economist. Have a beautiful day. Thank you very much.